we finished week one and now we have a new update. Uh, Rejects, we just finished our first full weekend of the pre-order beta of Warhammer 40,000 Darktide and frankly have been both excited and overwhelmed by the sheer volume of players jumping in. It's a great opportunity for many of you to play, but it also helps us shape the game leading into the launch on November 30th. As many of you have also seen, we are truly using this time to pressure test the systems and beta the game. Some of this isn't without hiccups, and we have had our share of them, and some of it can deepen players' experience. A good example of that is our Ventilation Purge event. It was one of many conditions we can add to the game, keeping your stay in Tertium fun and ever-changing. But we have work to do. We entered this pre-order beta with the idea that it was a great opportunity to continue, to continue improving the experience, and in some areas we are ahead of the game, but in others we are behind. In particular, below are the top issues we observed, our current state, and what we hope to address in the 1.0.7 update along with future updates. Online services and matchmaking. We made every attempt to scale our services for launch through both a technical and closed beta. I played in that one and that one. But the truth is that there is no good way for us to simulate a real-world environment at this scale. This weekend served as yet another test. Unfortunately, we did encounter a few bugs which negatively impacted players and the ability to play. So if many of you were bounced out of a game or could no longer connect due to a backend area, know that throughout the weekend the team worked through many of these issues which should help improve the service. That doesn't say it is where we want to be. Stability and performance. We are far from happy and seeing more crashes than we'd hoped. At the same time, we also expected some of this and are looking for the, looking to the pre-launch beta to test and help address, address many of these issues. So far, we have identified and fixed many of the current issues causing crashes in the recent upcoming patches, but there are also a few remaining. In particular, there is one big category of crashes manifested as GPU hangs that probably st still will show its ugly face at times. I'm wondering if that's the one that you get right before you jump off the Valkyrie because it does a really weird render on my screen where it's all blue with boxes on the right. I think that might be it. Uh, that said, we are on a good trajectory to have a stable game at the time of release due in large part to the many players that are helping provide us with the required data to help address these issues. In terms of performance, it is safe to assume that we see a high variance between players with seemingly similar hardware. Given the wide range of configurability in the game, it's difficult to automatically find the best parameters for every player. That said, the more data collected, the more we believe we improve in the detection and automation of configurability. At the same time, we will continue to adjust the presets and encourage all of you to, vi to visit the performance blog in the event that you don't believe event that you don't believe you are get oh wait in the event that you don't believe you are getting the best performance in the game. Finally, we will continue working on further optimization, especially regarding ray tracing. <laughs> okay. No one cares, man. Don't bother. Just don't bother. It's not worth it. It's a dead technology right now. It's not good enough to be considered standard, and it doesn't add enough to gameplay. Uh, gameplay balancing and new features. Meet Crawl, Oscar Crawl, as the designated chirurgeon of the Morning Star. I mean, sur surgeon, chirurgeon, whatever. Crawl will help rejects with their regular beauty routine, from simple haircuts to sophisticated changes in your overall appearance. Crawl is a maestro specializing in new outlooks on life, as he calls it. Make sure to visit him and leave a positive review. <laughs> we also continue to work on balancing our classes. The Zealot class has had a balance pass. Some fixes specifically on the toughness feats side and updated player-facing texts. The aim is to make the choice between the three options a bit more interesting whilst enabling Zealot survivability as an engaging challenge with sensible power. The bleed functionality has also been overhauled to provide proper stacking, opening up the viability and synergy of Zealot, Ogren, and Veteran talent options. Oh, ah, okay, so you can click bleed builds with all three of them. We included the missing piece of the initial Psyker balancing, namely the Force Sword push. We've removed the peril cost of pushing, along with a slight range nerf. Peril cost is still there on the push follow-up, though, Wow, so it used to cost you peril to push? That's crazy. But now it's, it costs peril if you do the counterattack after the push, or the follow-up, I guess. So, which should help to balance its ability to ignore the stagger reduction. We've taken the opportunity to bump infantry auto guns, shredder auto pistols, and ogren bully club, club to see if they can enrich the gameplay. At the same time, we've reviewed some of the challenging challenge outliers higher difficulty spawns and events as part of our effort to present a fun but challenging experience. Blocking the forces of chaos and melee should be a bit smoother while clamping down some of the more insane spikes in the pacing. 
Okay. So there might be less of a difference between the diff different difficulty um, levels now. Look to us to keep an eye on rebalancing our classes. It is something that we will do regularly throughout the pre-launch period and continue into launch as we respond to player feedback. Ah, okay. So I wasn't really expecting them to do a lot of balancing right now. Uh, 1.07 update summary. The 1.07 update offers many improvements and fixes to issues identified, identified over the past few days. In particular, there is a focus on improving the stability of the game, game rebalancing, and deepening customizations. This is a summary below with more detailed patch notes to follow on the Fast Shark forums. Ability bugs fixes. Fixed a significant amount of crashes, matchmaking crashes both on server and client. Great. Fixed stuck in position one queue issue. Never saw that one. Addressed many of the lack of XP and progression issues. Ah, okay. Didn't know there was that going on, really. Uh, fixed crashes that occur that could occur when tabbing out while watching a cinematic. Didn't have that happen at all. Fixed crashes when a player fell out of, fell out of bounds. Didn't have that one happen. Fixed issues in the credit store store where it was impossible to buy things with in-game currency. Never saw that one. Fixed issues where the third-person camera would follow the player when falling out of bounds. I think that happened to Madison. I'm not sure, though. <laughs> Fixed issues where the Tigris Mark II Heavy Eviscerator damage stat did not work as intended. Damage defaulted to 50%. Now should scale damage properly. Oh, okay. Um, fixed issues where the start animation of a heavy attack with the Thunder Hammer could get stuck. Fixed multiple crashes caused by the Beast of Nurgle. <laughs> fixed crashes that it could occur when leaving the Morning Star to head on a mission when having a specific trait equipped. Fixed crashes that could occur with certain weapon traits. Fixed issues where a player could complete the up-close and personal penance without meeting the appropriate criteria. I'm wondering if that's the one that I did with the flamer. Fixed issues where veteran sharpshooters covering fire did not work correctly. Fixed issues with zealots' talent descriptions not matching what they actually do. Okay, we're definitely going to have to read zealot stuff again. Fixed various issues where if you look straight down, the third-person character's head will twist and rotate 180 degrees. Oh, jeez. Fixed an issue where players would sometimes spawn with both weapons in hand. Saw that one a lot. Fixed an issue where the Ogren's grenade box collides with the primary weapon on block. Primary weapon on block. I've seen the grenade box stuck to your arm while you're doing melee attacks, but I don't know if I saw it on a block ever. Fix an issue with the armory where the stock may occasionally be refreshed prematurely before the timer should have elapsed. I may have seen that. Added codes to be displayed alongside errors. Okay. Fix an issue where toughness damage reduction effects didn't work versus melee damage, both talents and coherency effects. Wow. Okay, so that's a massive buff to um, Zealot because you have that toughness damage reduction aura. Fix an issue where Zealot's regained toughness while in melee talent didn't trigger properly. So Zealot just got like a bunch of stuff here, huh? Because like a bunch of things weren't working. Like this didn't work, this didn't work, this didn't work. Um, apparently their bleed thing didn't work. I'm thinking this is what they were talking about. Toughness. Next. So it doesn't look like Zealot got nerfed at all. It looks like it actually got buffed, which is great for me. I already think the Zealot's like definitely one of the strongest classes, though. Um, so let's see. Uh, rebalancing gameplay tweaks. Veteran talent fast balance pass bleeding. Okay. Talent Zealot talent balance pass toughness and bleeding updates. Right. Ogre and balance. We'll have to read what they actually did to it. Ogre and balance pass and grenade amounts adjusted. I wonder what that means. Like maybe you can get more grenade boxes now. Ogre and club attack combo adjusted. Damage values increased against certain enemy types. Oh, jeez. How are you... Mm, okay, so maybe it's better against Flak or Carapace armor. Ogren Shovel increased mobility. Adjusted pacing with enemy characters. Hordes and spawns. Okay. Maybe you won't get wrecked so much by a bunch of elites and, like, a horde at the same time. Additional Psyker gameplay adjustments, including removal of a push charge cost for the Four Sword. We read that already. Bump for auto guns and auto pistols. Range minions. Attack attributes adjusted. Okay. Changed revive rescue pull up states to be third person. Were they not? No, they were first person before, weren't they? 
I guess that's nice because sometimes you would slide through people and you start reviving and you couldn't tell if you were actually reviving or not. You had to turn around and look at them. So that's pretty good, actually. Added chirurgeon. Chirurgeon. Chirurgeon of the Morning Star. Go on, spend some time with the chirurgeon. We challenge you to share your best new looks and feedback. Thank you, the Dark Type team. Additional FAQ. Okay, so is there anything we don't know here already? No, I think this is just the standard FAQ. Awesome. All right, guys. So there you go. There's the new patch. I think the game's like pretty cool. It's nice to see them doing balancing already. Actually, I wasn't really expecting that. Um, we'll have to see like how hard the game feels now. So, okay. So actually, we can look at some of the stuff they changed here with the Zealot. So this... Seven, I think this is the same, 7%, because, yeah, with this it was 22, so that's the same. That's the same, that's the same, that's the same, that's the same. 75% toughness, damage reduction, and crit hit for 4 seconds, so that's different. This used to be 50% for 3 seconds, I think. Um, punch 5% toughness per second while within 5 meters of 3 enemies. Okay. Apparently this works now. I'm really create trip chance for three seconds. Um, that's the same. That's the same. Oh wow, that's extremely good. I didn't realize how good that was. So maybe this is a new thing. At max stacks gain uninterruptible. I don't think it said that before. That's the same. That's the same, that's the same, that's the same. Okay. Okay. So it's mainly just stuff in here that changed this and this. And, um, yeah. Um, and I haven't looked at the Psycho Tree, so I don't know what they would have done there. But I wonder what they did with the Sharpshooter for adding Bleed and the Ogren. That's pretty cool. Alright, now we can do... Don't forget to like and subscribe and check me out on Twitch. Awesome.